Hey guys, it's me. I'm back with kind of like a weird, odd question of something that sort of came to me the other day when I was listening to music and also watching this really bad, it's not really bad, but it's kind of bad, Time Traveler interview, and I put interview in quotation marks, from 2028, exclusive. I'm not going to play the first part of it, but I do want to play this one snippet because I just had this really weird thought when I was listening to it. Unless, of course, you want the unexpected. By the year 2600, nearly every ounce of information is online. Now, giant computers take up most of Earth. Biological humans still do exist, however, at some point in their life, they upload their consciousness to the internet. Okay, so this is an alleged recording of a guy who's from the future, which I don't believe, blah, 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 blah. But I thought the idea was so interesting, like of our consciousness being uploaded, like every few time frames. And it got me to thinking, like, just basically this whole idea behind why music affects us the way it does. And I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but I feel like when I listen to things of the musical tapestry of my life, I have like, and it's, it's not just memories that are different. It's just the entire feel of life is different. It's basically just every, and, and it's every six months. Like, I feel like it's every six months, my view of life changes or my feel about life changes or just my experience of myself in the world changes. This is everything from the way colors look to the way light bounces off things maybe even a little bit to the way things sound in my ear like some periods of my life sound is more pronounced and sharp and in other periods of my life sound is softer other periods of my life is are softer other periods of my life are harsher um things like the smell of your teacher's perfume or the congo bars your mother made <laughs> but again it was it was so much more than that because even like just like you'd register all those things differently like smells tastes feels but mostly it was the way light bounced off of things and the way colors looked to me that were different and it just made me wonder like are our brains getting uploads every six months or are we shifting realities every six months because i gotta tell you i mean different songs from different periods of my life make me almost feel like I was living different lives. If I mean, just so crazy. Like, look, like, okay, this. Yeah, I know. He's probably an asshat in real life. And I know there are all kinds of conspiracies about him. But this song, 1979. Just driving a ballet class with my mom. Going to the mall with my mother. The, and, and just the way the light would come in to the car window, like I see that there. And it was a totally different way that it came into the car window than when I jumped on to this song, which was like a six months difference. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Do you guys remember this movie? Xanadu. Of course, this was winter time when I heard this song. This wasn't as much of a summer song. But it was still just like, really like, oh my God. I remember it's like the smell of like, cause I lived in New England. It was the smell of like stuffiness because your windows have been closed all winter, but freshness because the air would like come through the windows, even in the winter, even through the storm windows. And it was like this smell in my playroom. And it was a good smell. It wasn't a bad smell at all. And I remember this. And I love this video! Suddenly it's all there! Okay, shut up. All right, so then we're moving on to the best. This is the best. Fall of 1983, Tom Cruise, Risky Business, Synchronicity, The Police. This was the album. As a matter of fact, I still have a mixtape that I made of this album. As the first song, I mean, this is like the first thing on it. And then all this fall of 1983 music, and it was so awesome. Oh my God. Oh my God, look how cool Sting looks there. He looks so cool. And look at this. Oh my God, I should tell you. Look, they got an old, actually, this looks like a mandected skull. It's got like holes all over it. And it's got this 
you know, this Y always looked very diagonal to me. It never looked straight across. Oh my God, best album ever. I don't want to stop it, but I have to. Okay, so then we move on to 10th grade when I had a bunch of punk rock and hardcore friends. The Pepsi song. It's the Pepsi song. Mike, Mike. No, I just need a Pepsi. Inst no, it's called institutionalized. Okay, he's yelling, but it was a good kind of yell. And then, oh my God, this is like the most hilarious thing. After I get out of high school and graduate college, this is just so hilarious. It reminds me of the springtime, and I remember the way the air smelled in the spring, and it was kind of wet. And then, and then it like combined with the carpet in the campus center at UMass. It was pretty cool. And it was kind of a magical time in my life. I'd just broken up with my first serious boyfriend, and I was feeling quite liberated, I must say. Okay, the girls are all around. Some of them want to get with me, but nobody wants to get with my ex-boyfriend because I broke up with him. Well, somebody other than me, and I'm everybody, right? Then I move on to college on the West Coast, and of course, this song, rounding up my college years. Best song ever. And it's how I felt in college, too, a little crazy. Because I was like, I gotta go out into the big, bad world of adulthood. And it sucks, but it's also gonna be awesome. And where did Seal come from? He just like came out of nowhere doing his weird hand signals. And he's not even what you would think, you know, what you would think would ascend to the high tops in music, but he worked it, man, he worked. Okay, and then of course the last thing. All in my 20s, not my last thing, but one of the like the last things that I really associate with music because my music is all over the place right now. Oh yeah. So this was basically the soundtrack of my 20s. Like pretty much anything by Cake. I love how they're like Southern, but then they rap. So it's really cool. So anyway, I don't know why it's like a every six month thing, but like every six month, suh. Every six months, uh, my feel of life changes. And then and music echoes it. And the weird thing I wonder sometimes is do people that are not of our generation experience this, like people who never had pop music to rely on to sort of like measure out their lives. I just really wonder that because, you know, how did they experience their memories? They didn't have that. They didn't have this thing that has no name for it. They did not have this experience in order to remember their lives in that certain way that's so special. And I found this article. Um, basically, I'm just gonna read a little bit of it, not the whole thing, but has a song or a car or what has a song in the car stereo or in the store recently caught you off guard and brought back a tidal wave of memories? Why do autobiographical memories linked to music remain so rich and textured? Interestingly, it appears that if you haven't heard a song in years, the neural tapestry, ooh, neural tapestry, I like that, representing that song stays pure and the song will evoke stronger specific memories of a time and place from your past. The memories linked to overplayed songs can become diluted because the neural network is constantly being updated. And that's the thing. They don't play a lot of songs from like the summer of 79 and 80 on the radio anymore. So I think that's why they're so strong with me. But also, I think they'll always be strong with me. Um, the neuroscience of vivid musical memories. A series of recent studies have found that listening to music engages broad neural networks in the brain, including brain regions responsible for motor actions, emotions, and creativity. In the first study of its kind, Amy Baird and Serene Sampson from University of Newcastle in Australia used popular music to help severely brain-injured patients recall personal memories. Their pioneering research was published on December 10, 2013 in the Journal of Neuropsychological Rehabilitation. Although their study only involved a small number of participants, it is the first to examine music evoked autobiographical... Auto, I can't say it! Music evoked autobiographical memories, M-E-A-M-S, in patients with acquired brain injuries, ABIs, rather than those who are healthy or suffer from Alzheimer's disease. In their study, Barrett and Samson played snippets from Billboard Hot 100, Billboard Hot 100, number one songs in a random order to people with ABI. 
The songs taken from the whole of the patient's lifespan from age five were also played to control subjects with no brain injury. All participants were asked to record how familiar they were with a given song, whether they liked it, and what memories the song evoked. Interestingly, the highest number of MEAMs in the whole group was recorded by one of the ABI patients. In all those studied, the majority of MEAMs were of a person or people or a life period and were typically positive. Songs that evoked a memory were noted as being more familiar um, and more well-liked than songs that did not trigger an MEAM. This is common sense. Yeah, so <laughs> nothing by, well, I'm not even going to say. I'm not going to diss any musical likes because you guys may like that bit of music, so I'm not going to diss anything. Two previous studies identified a broad range of neural networks that are engaged when we listen to music. A 2009 study from the University of California, Davis, mapped the brain while people listened to music and found specific brain regions linked to autobiographical memories and emotions are activated by familiar music. The UC Davis study entitled The Neural Architecture of Music Evoked Autobiographical Memories was published in the journal Cerebral Cortex. The discovery may help. Uh, to explain why music can elicit strong response from people with Alzheimer's disease, said the study's author Petra Janata, associate professor of psychology at UC Davis' Center for Mind and Brain. The hub that music activated is located in the medical prefrontal cortex region right behind the forehead and one of the last areas of the brain to atrophy over the course of Alzheimer's disease, which is really interesting. So I'll leave this article in the description section, but I just thought it was um, fascinating and I just want to know, do you guys like every six months of your life just experience yourself in the world differently as if every six months we've shifted into another universe, although your time frame might not be on my time frame. So in other words, my three month seg into another universe, maybe your six month seg into another, or no, my, your six month seg into univer, another universe, maybe my three months existence in this one. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to address that with you and I hope you have a great night and thanks for liking, watching, subscribing, or even disliking, whatever. It's your prerogative. It's a free country and join me on board and we'll have more amazing discussions and we'll all have a funky adventure. Thank you so much. Have a great day, night, afternoon, whatever time it is that you are watching, and talk soon. Bye.